Welcome to Whiskey Talk, Malts and Music, brought to you by the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, here in the vaults in Leith. My name is Rick Galloway, I'm a broadcaster, author, musician and music journalist and the idea of this podcast is to bring together single cast, cast strength whiskies, and music. I ask creative people to pair up four drams with four pieces of music, we discuss their selections and we go off on tangents into their lives and careers. I hope you enjoy. Slanjava. Actor, producer, author, businessman, whiskey fanatic, mm-hmm. Sam Huken, welcome to Malts and Music. Thank you. Malts and Music, I'm very happy to be here. It's yeah. an absolute pleasure to have you here. Yeah. And we're going to talk a little bit about your career. We're going to talk about mm-hmm. whiskey, obviously, music, and this strange concept of pairing up these amazing whiskies with tracks. They're mad. But it's, uh, it's an incredible concept. And, um, you know, when I first uh, first heard about this and you invited me on I thought this is going to be easy you know and then you start to dig into it like whiskey you know there's so many layers and different avenues and and it's a very personal thing as well isn't it I mean whiskey tasting but also music and also just you know whatever palette that you have you know your taste is going to you know your sort of notes or whatever are going to be slightly different from mine and from anyone else's you know no matter whether it's food or or whiskey or anything Mm. you've actually paired up whiskey and sushi before um, I have. Yeah, you have you? Have oh, I? Well, I I've been in Japan actually, and I mean, we had an. I remember having this amazing meal, um, and they were bringing out the Hakushu Twelve, mm-hmm. you know, which is a slightly smoky whiskey, and uh, that was incredible. But actually, at the end of the meal, um, you know, I'd had a lot of you know rather odd things to eat, and they brought out this thing that is uh, very good for dessert, and I'm like, oh, fantastic, you know, dessert, and it looked like uh, strawberries and cream took a big, big bite of it. And it was actually raw fish guts with fermented tofu. Oh. So essentially, tofu that's gone off and raw fish uh, guts. Oh, uh, no. So I necked that whiskey, uh, which was delicious, by the way. But um, but it was almost like a, a sort of, you know, cleanse the palate. Yeah, cleanse the palate, just get it down. But um, I've never done a proper pairing, but I do love the Asian blends. I think right, they yeah. are incredible. And that's, well, we'll get into it, but that's where I think the Sassanac really well, we're gonna, was inspired. We're going to try three drams from the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, yep. and we're going to have a dram of your very own whiskey, Sassanac, which we're going to talk about as, a yep. bit later on yep. as well. Uh, but just before we get stuck into dram number one, mm. you're a member of the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society right. and have been for many years. Yep. Uh, you know, why join up? Why, why do you love the society so much? Or look, I think, um, I mean, looking at the, the whiskies you put out, they're all so unique, so individual. Uh, love the the profiles that you guys write and as you were just saying earlier you know the fact that it it's very individual um, so they have these incredible names and great um, descriptions of what they taste like but I think that's a really accessible for for someone that's new to whiskey or, or trying to explore different whiskies you look at the the profile name and the, the description and then you see if you can find those same flavor profiles that it's described for but also the the buildings I have to say are brilliant um, obviously we are, we're in Glasgow right now yeah uh, the hubbub uh, is behind us. You can hear it's very busy here, but um, there's got the beautiful Queen Street and also the vaults, which I'm a big fan of. And we were there recently for my friend Gray McTavish's stag do doing a tasting, which was um, a bit raucous, but a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, but, and I'm sure Graham's name will come up in our chat. Yeah, I think so. it might. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I live near the vaults. I love it. I've n- never actually been to the Glasgow rooms before, so it's lovely to be here. And as you say, a bit of hubbub, and that gives it a bit of character. It does. Let's it get does. stuck into dram number one, oh, Sam. Well. So we're going in for tractors and old medicine. Which yes. I will give you the details on those. Please do. But yeah, go for it. Now, I have to say, this one was the one that caused me the most difficulty oh really okay that's... only in that there's so much so many different ways to describe it yeah um, and then so many different i guess music pairings right okay well i'll give some of the tasting notes yeah, out go ahead. Can I, I'll it's drink? so it's got yeah <laughs> it's got uh, it's called tractors and old medicine uh, it's a highland whiskey from inch murren uh, it's a flavor profile spicy mm. and dry we've got all the flavor profiles there they're always brilliant uh, it's a second fill uh, bourbon hogshead cask it's 14 years old it was distilled in 2004 and it's 60 percent alcohol mm. uh, some of the tasting notes very quickly A brazen set of aromas greeted us from the brim of the glass. Potent notes of aspirin, ink, antique furniture, steel wool, used sandpaper, caramel wafer biscuits, and soot all vied for the panel's attention. They're covering a few bases there, but... (laughs) They are, but I mean, it really is. There's a lot going on. I think it's... I mean, the the bourbon in it, it comes through. The colour is beautiful. Uh, the strength, definitely. I haven't tried this watered down, but I, I want to do yep, it in well, a second. But cheers. Sign cheers, cheers Slange. Sir. Great to meet you, and let's, thanks for taking part in this. Oh, thank you for let's, having me. Let's. Mm. Mm. 
Yeah, quite bourbony, mm. a little bit of sweetness on the on the nose and on the palate. I mean, it's a little bit of sharpness, but yeah. it's quite smooth as well. So rich. Yeah. Quite it's dry. quite dry. Yeah, quite yeah. Dry. And that, that for me, I mean, if we're going to talk about music, get into it. But I think, um, you know, I was like, ah, where do you go with this? And, and my initial thought was to make all my pairings Scottish music. Yeah. Um, of course. Uh, but then I, I started thinking, well, I've got to think a little bit outside the box. And this one in particular was very difficult. You know, it's from the Highlands. It's quite dry. It's it's bright. Um, I don't know what it's like with water. I'm going to do that right now. So it's, Yeah, I, and it's part of the spicy and dry profile. So yeah. there is that. I'm now getting at the back of my mouth and top of my palate a little bit more spice as well. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah. I think, I think I'll do the same. Add a bit of. It. And that really opens it up. Does it? Yeah. I think that is utterly, utterly delicious. So, I started thinking, well, where do I go with this? And I think, whiskey, whiskey, you have a lot of. Uh, it's quite an, a drink that can give you a lot of memories, a lot of emotions. I think. Mm -hmm. um, and I started thinking about this, and it's a bourbon, a bourbon yeah. ex bourbon barrel. And I recently was on a road trip, in America. Uh, in a camper van and I went uh, from uh, uh, Utah through Wyoming um, up to Yellowstone and it was an incredible, incredible experience. I've always wanted to, I mean I've been to America many times, I don't yeah. know, sort of 20 times, but I tend to go to either the southern states or yeah. the two coasts, yeah. but I'm desperate to go to exactly where you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Just phenomenal scenery. Well that's it, and you know obviously in Scotland we're, uh, we're, we're um, very lucky to have you know the highlands it's so dramatic and then i got there and i was like it's so vast it's so mm. big uh and wyoming especially but actually then when you get to yellowstone and you see those mountains it's incredible mm -hmm. however tenuous link i know but the bourbon in this i just think is is so strong and it's so delicious and unctuous and um it reminded me of when I got to Wyoming, a place called uh, Jackson Jackson Hole, mm -hmm. and there's a famous bar there called the Million Dollar Bar, and it's a cowboy bar. Great. Uh, and there's all these cowboy saddles that you sit on at the bar. And I was drinking the Wyoming um, whiskey, which I think was a single malt, um, and they had a bourbon uh, expression as well. And that just reminded me of that a great night in the Million Dollar Bar, listening to this music, which is you know a bit of country. Yeah, and, sure. Uh, and so you're going for a bit of country. So we're going to go for a song, which is um, became a bit of a, uh, I guess, uh, the soundtrack to my my road trip. Um, Toby Keith, uh, I love this bar, and it's just about this country bar and about the people in the bar and how they make it. Mm. Uh, it's it's a ridiculous song, and um, I I just love drinking this dram bourbon. And, and imagine myself back. And were you filming uh, th that trip, or was this just a, a sort of holiday and a bit of a road trip of for yeah, fun? No, it was. A, it was a bit of a getaway, and um, I just wanted to, you know, to, to explore America a bit more. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, Toby Keith, it is then. Toby Keith. Right. I love this. And, and with the water, it sort of opened up. That whiskey wise, yeah. it's it's far sweeter now on the nose, certainly it for is. me, and also maybe a couple of sips as well. Mm. I think it really suits a little bit of water this tram. Um, I think you're right with it. Tell us about, about, you know, music in your life. Are you a mad music fan? Are you, like, obviously, you've, you know, you're pairing up music and whiskey, but do you have music on in the background? Do you play? Uh, well, I guess uh, I grew up, you know, south of Scotland. We had a, a quite creative family. My uncle actually has a Cayley band. Mm -hmm. um, and he introduced me early on, I think, to a lot of Scottish, traditional Scottish music. So you had that in the household? So, sort of yeah. in the household. Uh, and so his site, you know, sort of be like things like, Man Ran or mm -hmm. you know, sort of very traditional Scottish and my mum was a, a huge music fan she really into sort of things like Brian Ferry the Beatles cool um, really cool so uh, it's funny I personally I play music but but it's not only the people around me that are really uh, into music but um, but I mean did you do piano or guitar or anything as a kid uh, trumpet and trombone oh right right yes okay. yes I've got, well, you know, I'm, I'm always looking for uh, brass players to play on my, I, my recorded uh, music, so I'll give yeah, you a shout. You, if you don't you... want me, no. But, uh, <laughs> it was fine. I remember it was, it was actually at school when I started, and I always wanted to play the trumpet. And they had three trumpets and one trombone, and they gave, because I had long arms, they were like, well, you can play the trombone. And it was this, you know, really heavy instrument, and you had to walk to school with it, and it was cumbersome, and I hated it. Mm. Um, and then when I was... Um, at school doing my hires I decided to take up the trumpet and I took my music hire in there and loved it really enjoyed it and actually uh, uh, quite a famous Scottish 
jazz musician called Eddie Severn. Mm -hmm. um, he taught me to play trumpet, and um, he now leads the Scottish National Jazz Orchestra. R right. And are you into jazz out of interest? Well, yeah. No, really big fan. Me too. Me too. I'm, I'm becoming more and more so as I, as I get older. Mm -hmm. And do you ever pick up the, the horn and give it a blast in the house? These uh, days? I haven't recently. Um, do you know what I have done? I'm, you know, I guess these terrible people that, you know, I've bought a, a keyboard piano. I've got two electric guitars now, uh, acoustic guitar, and can I play? No, I've got about two chords. And, That's all right. But uh, I keep meaning to pick them up, and I, I think when I have a bit more time, I will. But um, maybe I will. Maybe this will inspire me after yeah. a few drams to get it. Well, precisely. I mean, music and whiskey are two things, obviously, for this podcast, but generally that go perfectly together. Um, tell us a little bit more about your childhood, because you say you grew up in a creative house. Yeah. It was, it was, it was almost like a sort of, your parents were kind of hippies, were they? Or uh, Well, I mean, they wouldn't like that to be called that, my mum especially, but, um, but I, I suppose they were. They were in that time period, right? Yeah. And, uh, um, certainly, you know, my brother was named after one of the elves in Lord of the Rings, so you right. can see where this is going. And we were in Dumfries and Gallery, and there was a, a huge creative um, community there. We, our friends were um, potters, or uh, my mom. My mom actually worked for a clog maker. Right. Uh, okay. So hand, handmade uh, leather um, footwear. Uh, she's an artist now, um, so I guess yeah, it was a very creative sort of upbringing. And we've already established that you started playing music, and there's music around you, mm. acting. You got right. bitten by the bug. Yeah. Uh, I I went to youth theatre as well, and right. I, I'm a I'm a huge advocate for it. But I know yeah. you are, and was that mm. was that your kind of window into the career that you've had now? Was that the, the sort of door opening? I think you're right, yeah. And I don't know where you, where did you go in Edinburgh, was it? Or? Uh, no, I well, I, I I applied and I went to National Youth Theatre in London. Ah, so right. I went down to London for a month yeah. one summer when I was 15 years mm -hmm. old, and it was life changing. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. Uh, eyes, yeah. And yeah, it really did. It was it was all about improvisation and so mm -hmm. on, and it it was something that still stays with me. I went then went back to school and started a drama workshop in my school. Wow. Uh, but but yeah, mm -hmm. you know, how about yourself? What, what yeah. Well, I think the same as you. You know, I think I went from rural Scotland to the big bright lights of Edinburgh, which felt like going to a big city. It, mm. I mean, it was really not at the time. Edinburgh is still quite small, but yeah. but it felt like a big city. And I did. I went. I joined the Lyceum Youth Theatre, and that really is where it all began for me. You know, I was very well supported there. Very lucky to be cast in some of the main stage shows. So I got I, just an insight into what it, you know acting was, and I knew I loved theatre. Uh, I just didn't know I could do it. Um, and eventually I applied for drama school and, and came here to Glasgow. Yeah, yeah. RSAMD as it right. was, now it's the Royal Conservatoire. That's right, the Royal Conservatoire. Uh, but uh, an incredible institution, really. Isn't yeah, it? and um, I, I have friends who've either done music or, or acting there, or mm. sometimes a bit of both. Mm. Uh, how was your time there? And it just it embedded that love, you, you know. I mean, it sounds romantic, but this is the truth, that you, know, you, you, you walk through those doors and there's music emanating from each rehearsal room, of which there are hundreds. There's opera going on, you can hear them warming up and singing, and there's acting going on, and, and ballet, and everyone, you know, it just is this hub of creativity. And uh, I used to, every lunchtime, go through to the opera department, because they had, always had a rehearsal room somewhere. There's always a piano in there, and you do this almost like a singing warm up, but it was just to work on my voice. But you could always, mm -hmm. just that, that music always in the background uh, and creativity, and it was, I, I loved every moment of it, yeah. Yeah, that's great. And and you've gone on to do all sorts of different things in theatre as well. Some of the, the, the a lot of Scottish theatre, the Citizens you've act, uh, acted in, mm. uh, Dundee Rep, mm. the Lyceum you mentioned. Right. Um, any particular highlights, any t times, that, of, you know, when you were doing a, 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 you know, a run of shows and went, oh, that was when I really found my feet or I loved yeah. the cast or yeah. I really felt like I shone as an actor or any mm. particular highlights of those? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the Traverse and Lyceum were the yeah. two sort of, the, the Lyceum, I worked as an usher and then was lucky to do some plays there, but uh, the Traverse Theatre is where I really started. And uh, there was a great guy called Philip Howard who used to run the, the Traverse. And he cast me in my second year of drama school um, in a play that we did at the festival. And then we toured all around the world. We went to London, we did the West End. But great. That, that was, yeah, I guess, the, the, the jumping off platform. But going back to, you know, it was at the time, you know, the Edinburgh Festival, the Fringe. So, and the Traverse was this hub. You know, you'd go down there, even if you weren't seen a play, you'd go in there and the bar is just full of Super exciting. Actors Still is. and musicians. Yeah. And yeah, and it's just, it, it just felt like a real cultural mm -hmm. hub. Yeah, it's a great place. Well, yeah. you know, as I say, but based in Edinburgh, and, and yeah. you know, 
I love going to the theatre when, when possible and, um, you know, given any chance to go and have a, a couple of drams in the right. Lyceum or yeah. the uh, Traverse Bar. Yeah. Cheers, by Cheers. the way. The palate cleanser and on to dram palate number cleanser. two, shall we? And, and round, yeah, absolutely. And round the corner was actually a bit of an institution as the Blue Blazer. Oh, um, yeah. Which, you know, all the actors would go to. And back in the day, they'd go at lunchtime as well, which I couldn't believe, you know, drink a couple, have a couple of drams or a couple of beers and then go back to rehearsal. But <laughs> I segue into that because it has a gr also a great whiskey collection in it. Yeah. Um, I still like going to the Blue Blazer, and yeah. um, it's it's a great it's a great boozer. Um, so we've had Toby Keith um, paired up with our Highland Inch Murren, which is Tractors and Old Medicine. And for all you numbers geeks out there, it's one one two point three nine. If you're looking for it on the yes. Scotch Malt Whiskey and, and Society, I apologise for the the you know the music selection there, but um, I think not it's at one all. that you've probably not heard of. So. Yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, no, I haven't heard it and I'm looking forward to digging in. And <laughs> let, me, let me remind anyone watching or listening that the tunes that you've said uh, or you're going to suggest and all the other guests on Malts and Music are on a Spotify playlist. We compile them all, so it's just an ever-growing mm. monumental playlist of, of completely eclectic choices, as you might imagine. Right. And there's a bit of country. I don't think we've had much country in there, so that's good. Yeah, country and, and whiskey goes well together. Good choice. It does. Well, there was actually a, uh, there's a great band, Frightened Rabbit, uh, uh, Scottish, you know, it's a good Scottish band, and uh, unfortunately we lost um, Scott, Scott yeah. uh, a few years ago. But there, there was, I almost chose um, Old old Fashioned, yeah, yeah. which is a great sort of country, stomping, stompy song yeah. that I thought might go well with that as well. So you could maybe put that on as a, as okay. an extra, because um, I wanted to put a bit of Frightened Rabbit on. Okay, well, around. good. Well, we'll give you two. We'll give you two Thank for you. that one. <laughs> right, let's right. let's move into dram number two, oh. which is a space side. Uh, it's got an excellent uh, title. It's called uh, Elgin Marvels. And, um, yeah, we'll pour it out, and then I'll I'm excited give... about this one. You like this one? I mean, oh. I'm I'm, not only am I getting your music choices for the first time, but I am also tasting this whiskey for the first time, and I can't get the top opener of this one. Look at that colour on that. Oh no, I oh, can't. No, you oh, can't I, oh well, what a shame. Oh wait, hold on. Just yeah. brute force, that'll do it. Wow. There we go, I've done it. Nothing's gonna stop me drinking this whiskey, oh, Sam. Oh boy, this is a... This oh is wow, a look at the colour of it. Yeah. Look at the sort of dark amber. So that's what, first fill toasted hogshead, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it smells amazing. Right, okay, so I will read out some of the details. Elgin Marvels, it's a Speyside Glenmore. Uh, it's old and dignified, that is the flavour profile. First fill toasted oak hogshead, as you say, Sam, 24 years old. No wonder it's old and dignified. Date distilled November 1994. It's the oldest whiskey I've had in a wee while. Um, alcohol content is 57.8%, so it's pretty strong. Uh, here's just some of the tasting notes. This dram grabs you by the ankles, pulls you deep beneath waves of plummy, dark, ancient Armagnacs. A world of buffed mahogany, precious hardwood resins, leaf mulch, medical vapour rubs, <laughs> lamp wicks, demerara rum cocktails, yes. furniture waxes, and oozing syrupy fruit liqueurs. Uh, I, I haven't even like oh, sipped it gonna, yet. But... You're, you're like, I've gone very quiet. It's not, yeah. it's not the best whiskey for a podcast because you're just gonna go silent as I you just enjoy sit it. Sit in the corner yeah. and, and enjoy it. Yeah, but um, it smells amazing. Like, almost like a cognac or something. It's, right. Um, so rich, very a lot of sh like that kind of caramel sugar. Yeah. Um, I had an Armagnac the other day, and actually I had a nose of it before I drank it, and it smelled a bit like this actually. But I'm going in for my first sip. Cheers. Cheers, yeah. Lange yes, again. I'm almost finished. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what this podcast's all about. Mm. Oh. Right. I'm getting that. The sweetness and the kind of the the kind of um, you know dates and fruitiness, but also that furniture polish and that ma mahogany and so on that it kind of mentions. It's it is a it's a heavy duty dram. Right now, I mean, and it, and of course, if we're thinking of music, I mean, you've got to go for you know some someone that's got you know, gravitas. And uh, I was thinking of old school, and of course, instantly I was thinking you know one of the Rat Pack or Frank Sinatra or. It's just so, like, you know, in a leather armchair. Mm -hmm. um, so I went all around the houses with this one, and I even started thinking about, well, old, old school movies or classic movies. Uh, I was thinking of Marlon Brando. I was thinking of The Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. Mm -hmm. I went right around the houses here, mm -hmm. um, but I've come back to Scotland. Okay. 
because, well, for two reasons. One, that I'm actually going to go see this gentleman play in Glasgow this weekend. Oh, wow. Yeah, but I also think he, he would represent this. If you listen to him, his, his, his voice is caramelly and rich and dark. Um, he's maybe not old, as old and dignified as this whiskey is, <laughs> but um, Paolo Nottini. I thought you might mention yeah, that there man. Yeah, you yep. go. I mean, it, it's, well, he's also surprising, you know. You don't, I don't think people realize he's Scottish. Um. It's funny, it's funny when I speak to people, specifically quite often Americans or Canadians or Australians, yeah. and they're like, oh, Calvin Harris, he's Scottish. Or, you know, Louis Capaldi, he's Scottish. And yeah. the same with Paolo Nottini. It's yeah. very often like, but he doesn't necessarily sound... But I think I think he does. I think he's got that Scottish twang in his you voice, especially it. as he goes on. You can hear it at times, yeah, definitely. But uh, I just felt, he, you know, he's got this this caramelly, deep, rich voice, and I and especially I've heard. I can't wait to see him play tomorrow night. But I've heard, you know, the full orchestra there. It's just a real rich, round, full experience. So I think, yes, Paolo, I think this is this is your dram. And which and which track so, are you going to go so for? So through the echoes. Oh yeah, one of the new ones. Yeah, yeah. his new one. I think it's his new album. So yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's um, it's a great album. He's an artist to me that just grows and grows. Uh, you know, as an artist, you know, he doesn't seem to pander to trends or zeitgeist or anything like that. He just does what he wants. If he wants to throw in some rhythm and blues, some ska, he does right. it. If he wants to throw in some psychedelia, some heavy rock, he does it. And if he wants to do a ballad, he does it. Yep. And which, which hopefully works with this whiskey, because I think, you know, you just sit back and let Paolo play and just it's such a full music experience. And I think this whiskey, oh, I can just sit for hours. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't mind a wee bottle of this, actually. Yeah, well, there, we'll get the whiskey sighted on. Uh, the, the hints have been laid, Sam, don't <laughs> worry. Don't worry. Um, yeah, no, uh, it's absolutely, and a great choice as well. A talented Scottish artist. Oh, and, wow. and she's sold out five, six nights at the Hydro. I think it's a record. That's right. 65,000 tickets in one city. Well, actually, my, my good friend who I grew up with from Edinburgh, uh, we were at school together. We went to a Steiner school, which is you know, a very mm. creative yeah. place. But he's actually the sound technician on Paolo's um, uh, tour. So, what, so he's front of house, yeah, isn't he? Front right? house, so I'm going to go sit in his uh, sound booth. Oh, you'll get the best sound in the room. Yeah, yeah. Good yeah. on you, good yeah. on you. Yeah. Uh, look, everyone knows and loves you through Outlander. Mm. But we, and we've, we've talked a little bit about the RSAMG where you studied and then mm. getting into theatre and so on. You know, you've done all sorts of things so far. I yeah. mean, you've done lots of kind of TV stuff, um, Doctors, Rebus, Midsummer Night's oh, wow. Murders, yes. all sorts of, yes. you know, you've, you've, you've done a whole mm. range of things. Any particular highlights or things that you, you've done that you went, that was a real, that, I, t I learned something from that mm. that prepared you for your ongoing sort of mega stardom or whatever now. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I guess... Um, you know, a, a jobbing actor, like a yeah. jobbing musician, you know. Did you move to London or? I did, yeah, yeah. I, I, when I left drama school, I went uh, straight to London. I was there 12 years uh, in North London. It seems like all the Scottish actors and musicians kind of stay north. Um, and uh, there was a great community there. Um, I spent a lot of time in America as well, back and forth. Um, but it wasn't really until I got this job outlander that's kind of changed, you know, the, the, my life really. and. Uh, put me into a different, I guess, different category of, um, I, I don't know, of the projects that I get offered and the, yeah, the sure. opportunities that I get. But, uh, I mean, I guess it, I guess it's theatre, really, where it's all, you know, it all happened for me. Yeah. Uh, and some of those experiences early on, you know, the Highlands and Islands tours, I remember one, uh, we were touring, um, I think it was Knives and Hens, and we went up to Easdale Island. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I don't even know the space, but it's a tiny little island. I think you can walk around it in twenty minutes. Right. It's all made of um, shale, which is this very thin stone, and they hold the annual or the national uh, stone skimming championships. There. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because all the stones are really flat, um, and it's only a hundred yards across the water to to get to the island, but you have to get a boat because it's very deep. Uh, and so all the mainlanders come across to watch the show, but then there was a storm that night, so we all got stuck on the island. So mm -hmm. we had this impromptu, I guess, Kaylee, uh, yeah. where you know the locals brought out their instruments, played a lot of music, and we drank a lot of whiskey after the show, and uh, that was a, a great experience. Yeah, um, I just I love the idea of being ah, we're locked on an island. Aye. We can't we can't what leave. We oh well, skim stones, drink whiskey, and dance. Right, right. Like like the ancient Scots would have done, and the yes. and the modern day Scots still yeah. do. Yeah, it's, um, I don't know, it is a very, a very, especially when you go up north as well, you go to the islands. Yeah, something. I mean, you've, you've, you've dabbled in so many different things, but as you say, Outlander has just blown you up across the world. Right. Um, 
Diana, the writer, says you are Jamie Fraser. Right. I mean, how, 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 how did, well, I mean, she said that straight away, pretty yeah. much when you were yeah. cast. You were the first person to be cast That's on, right. the, yeah, yeah. on the series. Yeah. Um, are you still loving it as much as, as, as you did when you first took the part? Yeah, it's, it's incredible. You know, we've been on the show now eight years. We're just about to finish season seven. It's un unbelievable that we're already here, set, you know, eight years into it. And um, yeah, I mean, every day is is challenging and, and fun. And we're with this big family, you know, we, we're, we're all close connected. Um, it has been an incredible experience, incredible ride. And what a great character to play. I mean, yeah. he's iconic, you know, and I think mm. it's rare that you get to play one of these iconic characters and uh, I was going to ask you about series seven you've you've answered that already so it's it's underway it's well yeah almost we're almost done. done we've been shooting for a year um 16 episodes wow um, so that's how long so yeah, full, pretty much a full year a full year yeah. yeah yeah so it's it's been a it's been a uh, quite quite a marathon this one but it, it, you know every year is what it feels like each season gets better or it has more intrigue you know we're not always in the same place we're always it's, it's, it's almost a road movie yeah you know, we've been in scotland we've been to France and Versailles and the Caribbean and now we're in America and it's the War of Independence. I mean, it's really, it's yeah. dramatic stuff. Yeah, and, and you're a producer now on the programme. That's right, yeah. And, and what does that entail for, for people who might not know? I mean, I don't necessarily know. What, you're, you're obviously acting, yeah. you're Jamie, but as a, in your production role, what, what yeah. does that entail? Yeah, I mean, I think it's different on different projects, but this, you know, I think we're the continuity, myself and uh, Katrina Balfe, who plays mm -hmm. my, my um, co-star, and it plays Claire, and I think it's it's more. You know, we've been there from the beginning. You you know how these characters uh, react or talk, and it's it's not like um, you know we're dictating anything, but it's it's more. Um, you know, when when writers come and go, and um, and creative teams, you know, it's it's important to have some continuity. Continuity and, and uh, someone that's connected to it and yeah, has been for yeah. you know many years. Um, but I think personally, I see it. My role is almost just to to look out for everyone. You know, to make sure that the crew are looked after and, and the actors and. Um, it's such a machine, it really is, and there's so many parts to it. Um, but it's uh, it's been a really good learning curve as well. But you're, and you're still getting the same buzz out of doing it. I can yeah, tell even by yeah, w yeah. the way you're explaining yeah. what you're doing. Yeah, and it's mad, you know. So like, you know, for instance, we're in America. So now we have, you know, a hundred Native American Cree warriors, you know, charging around the highlands of Scotland, and I think it's mad. It's yeah. Just like, or we're it's creating. kind of imagination gone wild. Yeah, but, and, uh, and who knew that Scotland could double for, for North Carolina or wherever it is, Philadelphia. You were, I don't know if you still do, but a lot of it was being shot in Cumbernauld as well. Is, is well, that still where, happening? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we have our main um, studio there and it, it really has gone from being a, you know, an empty warehouse to, to a metropolis. It's got five sound stages, we've got huge workshops, um, we've got outdoor sets. Uh, it's helped regenerate that area. I think it's brought a lot of business to local business. I was going to say that. I think it must be hugely important for Scotland's film and TV industry yeah. having having that set up yeah. there and having that focus. Yeah. You know, what I mean, yeah. I mean, you you should be proud about that as I'm well. Re I'm very proud. You know, we uh, recently uh, won the BAFTA um, Scotland uh, Fan Award, and, and I got up and did a wee speech, and I just wanted to reiterate or remind people like what Outlander has done for the Scottish film and TV industry but also the tourism industry it's my friend it's a phenomenal. good friend of mine I went to school with I saw him last night yeah. um, we went for a meal and so on and he, he and I was saying I was going to be chatting to you and he, he said could please, can you pass on my thanks? Because he's a tour guide, so he takes right. bus loads of American tourists generally, but also yeah. it's obsessed with Outlander. Mm. And that's why they're on that tour, and that's why they want to go to that place in mm. Scotland. And, he, you know, he's he's obviously watched every episode as a result, and then it's like looking forward to series number seven and the, so on. The, the numbers are off the top of my head, I can't remember, but it's something around 38% or increase in tourism uh, during COVID, and this is during COVID, there were 1.5 million visitors to Outlander-related sites. Yeah, um, it's it's helped the, um, a number of sites like the Mill, the Preston uh, Preston Mill, or um, some of the castles we work at. You know, help them. He, he sometimes says that some of the castles that, you, that are mentioned in the uh, t TV program are slightly different from the actual castles that yeah. are being filmed. Yeah, and so some of the the tourists go, but well, that's what? not. You yeah. know, well, well they instance, filmed it. Um, uh, Mid Hope Castle uh, in the show is called Lallybroch, but uh, that's a great you know it's a really important site for Jamie Fraser. It's his ancestral home. It's on Hopeton Estate, and it's an incredibly beautiful castle. And um, yeah, I've just seen a huge number of uh, people enjoying. But also that we've trained, we've got 150 
like new trainees that we've trained up on, you know, who were never in the industry, who have now gone out and are now working in film and TV across the world. Yeah. So it's, it's well, incredible. There you go. There you go. Yeah, that, that's that's. And do you get time for much else outside of uh, Outlander? I mean, I know you've done, you know, loads of Hollywood films and so on, and uh, you've well, got something. I would say loads. Well, well, you, you've got a, more than me. <laughs> um, I'm no, trying you, to do loads, but, yeah. but you, you, you know, you, it can't be diff It can't mm. be easy. Sorry to yeah. to fit filming huge projects. Mm. If you're saying that a 16 episode series takes a year to yeah, right. film, right. you know, it's it's finding time. You're absolutely right, and finding something that also fits in within my short window. But um, I've been very lucky. I've done a number of projects, and uh, and and actually, you know, speaking of music, you've beautifully. Um, teed me up here you know I have a romantic comedy coming out next year mm -hmm. with Celine Dion who obviously is one of the icons of music mm -hmm. um, so that that's coming out next year and I've got a couple of other projects in the pipeline so yeah, that's good, fun, yeah. good excellent mm -hmm. um, well back to the whiskey how are you mm. getting on with I've the finished, drum you're done way ahead of I, uh, yeah I think you are I, with a pro here, I'm glad I'm glad yeah I'm definitely with a pro aren't I <laughs> um, uh, yeah I've added a little bit of water and it's yeah. opened it up a little bit Absolutely. it's brought out some of the yeah. more woody tones to me and I, but I, that was a quality dram that was an absolute it's Spectacular! I love that. Obviously, the whiskey society are probably gonna lose all their bottles of this because everyone's gonna want some. But yeah, I mean, and some of the you, you go to um, the whiskey society in Edinburgh quite mm -hmm. often, I, do, I yeah. believe, and yeah. and you're. I mean, what, t t let us know some of the benefits that you've had from the West Whiskey Society over the years, because in 2023, it's the uh, 40th anniversary oh, as well. Congratulations. Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, let's raise a, a dram to oh, the Whiskey Society. Let's raise a dram of water to oh, A dram of water, yeah, yes, indeed. Yeah, hydration is, uh, is important, but no, I do. I love uh, obviously visiting there and they've got a great setup and um, even, you know, you can, just even ordering online is great. You know? Well, that's it. And as a member, you get access to those unique bottlings before anyone else. I mean, I, I, I often take guests along to the vaults in Edinburgh and we have a few drams and then they're kind of like, I need to buy a bottle of this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So if you're if you're a member, obviously you get, you know, you're, you're well, able to dig into that early on. Mentioned earlier, but it was Graham McTavish's, my co-stars, um, stag do. I mean, we were very well looked after by the society in the vaults. We had a whiskey tasting there. And as its wedding is coming up, I believe I managed to purchase him a bottle of, I think it was called something like wedding morning breakfast. Ah, lovely, yeah. Um, like something along the lines. And um, he, he didn't share it with us, which was a shame. But I suppose <laughs> the point is he's going to share it with his new wife. But um, yeah, no, we had a great time there. And the vaults, obviously, is beautiful. But Queen Street, I, I do like popping in now and then. Yeah, good. Uh, well, no, I, you know, as I say, pop into Queen Street sometimes. Never been in here before, loving it here, mm. and the vaults is great. But we are going to take a slight detour from the Whiskey Society drams just for uh, the next whiskey, because we're going to have one of yours. Lovely. A Sassanach. Why not? Uh, tell us about Sassanach. Mm. For, for, I know there's a story attached to this, but tell us why, the name, because you know some people will be like, Sassanach, that's the name for a, a, you know, an English person, an, well, an yeah. outlander. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you said it, you got it in one. I mean, you know, I think, obviously, it was a derogatory name, and... Uh, a name for an English person or an outsider, and I think that's why we took it on board. You know, I think um, part of it was the show. Uh, my character, his his term of endearment for his wife is Sassenach. Yeah. Uh, and I think the show has changed that, but I think Scotland has changed. You know, Scotland has become a very open, forward-thinking place. We're very welcoming, and I think, um, you know, aren't we all the Sassenach? And anyone that's not from Scotland should feel welcome here. So, Good. Um, yeah, I, I sort of wanted to own that. Uh, and obviously the unicorn is the the emblem of Scotland is a <laughs> yeah. unique animal and um, has this great folklore about it. But I just felt I also wanted to create something that is uniquely Scottish, a great blend that is up there with the, the Asian blends, you know, the mm -hmm. Vickies and the Nikas. And, and I didn't think we had that something, you know, there are obviously other blended Scotch, but this one, you know, is predominantly a malt malt whiskey um, and it has that it has that real character of Scotland well tell us a little bit about your whiskey journey and how you discovered whiskey and why you're such a whiskey fanatic now mm. where did it start yeah I think like yourself you know the, your first introduction is probably a little quarter bottle yeah sneakily drunk behind the bus shelter the bus or something. shelter of something really really young and not very palatable uh, <laughs> sort of gives hairs on your chest but but um, it wasn't until I was living in London and in America and traveling to America a lot, and um, it was actually my friend who I'm going to see at Paolo and Rotini's concert. Um, uh, he and I were living in London together, uh, good friends, and we, we it was a Burns night. We went to a local bar in, in London. 
And we're like, missing Scotland, you know, being quite kind of homesick. Mm -hmm. And we ordered a, a single malt whiskey and uh, it was kind of the first time I really drunk whiskey properly. And I, I was just like, oh my God, it took me back to Scotland. It made me, reminded me of Scotland. And um, it's weird. I think whiskey, I do, I do have an emotional reaction to it. And I think people do, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's not like a, a vodka or, you know, other, other spirits. I think whiskey just has so much going on and can, can really conjure your imagination or really get, get things going. So, um, yeah, so that was the beginning, I guess. And then working back in Scotland, uh, I was offered a, a lot of opportunities to work with um, different brands, but I really wanted to create something on my own. And mm -hmm. so we were self-financed, self-designed, everything Lovely bottle. from the bottle to the design, to the, to the liquid, to the juice, you know, it's, uh, it's all, it's all me really. And, and I, did I'm you really do tastings it. to get it all right? Oh my God. We, <laughs> well, first of all, we went on a road trip myself and my business partner we, we honestly toured all around Scotland met a number of master distillers different producers all around from you know from the lowlands up up to you know Aberdeen the highlands and um, and eventually we came upon Michael uh, who's working out of Loch Lomond distillery uh, and we decided he would be our you know master distiller he just had a great a great understanding and a great appreciation and, and we, we agreed on a lot and then I, I, I tormented him for months you know, he kept sending me samples and um, we went down this journey together and, and eventually came to, to this blend. Okay, well, let's try it. I've never tried it. So oh, I'm, I'm, fantastic. Um, oh my God, well. Yeah, let's, let's go for let's it. see your poker face. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, Should I'm I pour you? Yeah, yeah, please right, do, please good. do. Pour yourself one as well. I mean, obviously, right. that's why we're here. Thanks, Sam, for pouring me a dram. It's got a lovely, mm. kind of, almost rosé kind of uh, colour to it. It's, yeah, it's, it's got a lovely sort of light yellow, slightly pinkish kind of tinge to it. Let me have a nose. So, aged, yeah, aged mm. in Madeira. Really? Oh, well, that might, yeah. So there you, you picked up on that, on the colour, I think. Um, it's nice, got so, very, you know, kind of slightly citrusy, fruity. Yeah. A, a little bit floral on the nose as well. But, you know, very mellow. Let me let me try some. And, I, and now... I'm, I'm, loving, I'm letting you to go ahead, yes. And that, now, to now I'm gonna, I mean, I, I suppose I'm going to ask you to pair some music with your own whiskey. Although mm. you could pair a million tracks, but you have to choose one yeah. as, as our yes, guest. Yes, right. Let, and interesting, we have been drinking single malts here, so this is this is a blend, but... Um, but you're not, you're a massive whiskey. Oh, it's delicious. I mean, it couldn't be more different from the last dram we've had, that yeah. old and dignified. Yeah. This is much more zingy and light. And yeah. you know what? You know, it's a blend, but it's got the, the quality of a single malt, I yeah. think. You I know? think so, yeah. I mean, as I said, it predominantly is a single malt uh, in there. Um, it, it is a blend of a 12 and a nine year old malt and then a 19 year old organic grain which I'm a huge oh, uh, grain, grain whiskey. fan. Right, yes. yeah, yeah. I am a huge fan because you can get these amazing, you know, uh, very, you know, aged bottles that are half the price of a single malt. Uh, and, and they, you know, they are very like- uh, They're quite very punchy sometimes. Punchy, but they've got so much like butterscotch and sweetness and yeah. apricot. Um, I really enjoy them. And I love to look online because you can find one for, you know, half the price of a single malt. And right. I had one recently at Port Dundas, like 40 year old, and it, and it was wow. you know, quite cheap uh, in comparison. And that bottle, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, that's, that's what I like about what, what I know of your, your whiskey sort of life is that you're not a kind of snob about it. If it's, a, if it's a good blend, you're into it. If it's a grain whiskey, you're into it. No doubt you like rye and all sorts of. L you know. I'm a huge rye fan, actually. Yeah, really big. Um, I was just in America a couple, uh, last week and I, I went on a bit of a, a trek around New York with all the different distributors, you know, looking at their, their rye selection because there's stuff you can get there you can't get over here. Right. And I mean, as well as Sassanach whiskey, which is delicious as I'm discovering, you're, you're also doing a tequila. Uh, yeah, we did a collaboration uh, on a tequila brand. It was funny, it was actually the day we launched the Sassanach uh, officially. Uh, in America, we were actually in Jalisco uh, with some friends of ours, uh, and we were in um, uh, tasting some different tequilas. And we just found that the, our, our friends there, um, Tony Sias, he's a third generation master distiller. Uh, he was drinking our whiskey, we were drinking his tequila, and we're like, why don't we do something, you know, just a one off a bottling? And, and so we have, and um, it was, uh, it was in, in exceptional tequila, really exceptional. I do love tequila as well, I have yeah. to say. If I'm not drinking whiskey nowadays, yeah. I don't really drink so much beer anymore. Yeah. Um, I tend to have 
I love tequila. I mean, I love a good margarita, etc. But just nice sipping tequila. Yeah. And also, yeah. I find one of the great drinks is very basic. Good tequila, yeah. soda water, fresh lime. Fresh lime, yeah. Absolutely, and I think, um, you know, in the UK, we don't have an appreciation of good tequila as much as they have in the US. I mean, it, it, You get are, sort of cooking tequila, as it were. Just get, like, you know, every, we all have those memories of, like, you know, let's do a shot of tequila, and it's like, you know, you make a face when you're drunk, and you <laughs> grab a lime and you suck it because it's so bad. <laughs> Whereas tequila can be like a great single malt. Like, like Sassanac, it's just, like, there's so many flavor profiles, especially the aged ones, the Reposados and the Ejos. And, um, and our tequila, you know, is a, a, a double wood Reposado. It's actually an Añejo, but because of the, the barrels in it, it's termed term differently. But um, it's been aged in French oak. Well, firstly bourbon and then French oak. So it's, it's almost got this champagne quality. Oh, wow. Um, I've got to try that. It, it, Have you got any left? I, well, we are actually doing, uh, you heard it here first, we're doing a small bottling for the UK. So okay. it will be available, yeah. Right, and, and it's called Sassanac, I take it. It is called the Sassanac Select El Tecaleño. Okay, yeah. right, I'm going to look sure out for that. I will make sure you get a bottle, don't worry. Oh, that's it's, very um, nice of you. It's exceptional stuff, but I, I do really enjoy uh, tequila, but we're actually, we're actually working on a gin right now, which is another... I was going to ask you, because you've got a company, is it Great Glen? Yeah. And, and that does Sassanac, yeah. and obviously this limited edition tequila, yeah. so a gin. And I heard little birdie told me that there was maybe a bourbon on the way. Am I, am I wide of the mark there? Well, I would love to do one. I think, you know, I'm a big fan, but I'd probably be more of a rye maybe, but... Um, right, okay. No, I mean, look, I love Scotland and I want to celebrate, you know, Scottish culture and heritage. We have so much to offer. And I think, um, obviously, the gin market is, is quite saturated at the moment. However, I, I do, we are making our own one and it's a wild Scottish gin and it's sort of everything from where I'm, I was born and raised. And uh, so everything, sort of all the botanicals are from, from Scotland or from the glens in the highlands of Scotland. So uh, it's been a, a really fun process. That sounds interesting. So yeah. what kind of botanicals are you going to throw in? What kind of, a bit of heather in there probably? Well, you guess what, there's heather in there, but there's, some, there's crab apples. Obviously citrus is very mm. hard to find in the UK, but. Uh, I have these great memories of picking crab apples as a kid, and they're they're so sour. Yeah. Uh, or throwing them at each other. Um, but Get some rose hips in there as we, well. We're actually using uh, black blueberries, blackberry leaf, yeah. and actually toasted oats, which gives it a really interesting mouthfeel. There's almost like this rich carameliness. Um, it's almost like like a vodka kind of taste to it. So um, it's going to be very balanced. Um, so if you're a gin fan. Well, I'm, 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 yeah, cheers, yes. Lange. <laughs> and thanks for the uh, Sassanac. It's tasting very nice. And now starting to get more of the butterscotch and the kind of sweetness from it, especially on the nose. And and there's, there is definitely a fruitiness to the, the, the flavor of it. As long it's, as it's interesting having that next to your, your, you know, old dignified there because it, it now feels a lot more bright and fruity oh, yeah. than I, than I normally uh, associate with the Sassanac. But I guess. It's interesting to compare them, yeah. Well, I think the reason we went for um, Sassanac as number three out of the four drams that we're having today is because our very last dram, which we'll have in just a second, is a Kaulila, and it's mm. a, an extremely smoky, yeah. peaty Isla malt. Yeah. And in a way, once you've had one of those, something that's a bit more kind of fragrant and lighter and fruitier yeah. kind of gets obliterated by that smokiness. By that smokiness yeah. But we haven't talked about the music. No. What? What? So what? What? Uh, <laughs> what song would you put with your own whiskey? I know, right? Well, this was this literally blew my mind. Like, how? You know, where do mm. I go with this? There, it's literally. You know, this is my passion, my whiskey. How? How do I find a song that's right for it? And I, I went back to, like, it has to be Scottish. Um, I <laughs> thought about the first time I ever came to Glasgow. I came for a concert. I came to see the Silencers okay, live. Right. I was 18 years old. They did the Wild Mountain Time. I was like, was that right? I looked at modern music, but um, I'm going to go, I'm going to go way back to a song and a musician that uh, sadly no longer with us, but Martin Bennett. Oh, right. Um, yeah. I, I knew him very briefly. I, I met him a couple of times briefly and I had good friends that knew him very well as yeah. well. What a talent. What a talent. And I used to work in Edinburgh in a cafe African cafe restaurant he would come in we'd sometimes see him in the local bar and um, I just I just thought he was doing this incredible music where it's basically dance music but also uh, classic Scottish and, and folk 
sort of uh, folk storytelling yeah. um, and uh, sampling bits of audio of yeah. sort of ancient audio pipes fiddles yeah. you know sort of almost like what what people might assume as kind of traditional music dance music Kaylee right. music yeah. but with electronic beats hip hop yeah. beats yeah. dubby kind of it, bass lines and it, yeah it's so it's so random but it's so, it sort of works and um, and now a tradition I have with a good friend of mine when we go hill walking if it's been a long walk and we're coming back down the mountain and you're just exhausted we'll, we'll put on this song and it kind of just gives you a, a sense of the grandeur of Scotland and it really picks you up so it's also a song that's been used I believe by Danny McCaskill mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the yeah, great, yeah the great mountain biker mountain yeah, yeah. biker and he did this great video around the Isle of Sky where he's doing these great tricks and it's incredible you see the landscape again of, of the Coolins but uh, so it's uh, Martin Bennett's Blackbird Okay. Um, and he has sampled, I believe she's one of the last summer walkers, the last um, uh, Romany or gypsy travellers, summer travellers. And I think he sampled her singing this song and it's just it's beautiful. What a great choice. And, uh, you know, you could have gone anywhere with your own whiskey. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, it, you, know, long, you know, sadly no longer with us Martin Bennett, but a, yeah. a serious talent who's influenced modern music in mm. Scotland. I think so. Immeasurably, I think, yeah. 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 What a great choice. Yes, Excellent. Marvelous. And, and a lovely dram as well. I, I, you. you know, um, that bottle might just disappear into my You're bag well, on the way yes, out. Yes, <laughs> um, mm. Brilliant. Okay. Well, I think we're uh, we're nearing the end of the podcast in that we've got one more dram to go. Yeah. And we're going in with the, the heavy smoke. So. Well, are we? Yeah. Are well, we going are heavy we? smoke? Yes. Because I, I haven't tried this dram. Because but what I found so you thought it was a light smoke. So surprising about this was God, I'm having trouble opening these. Oh damn things right come on clearly haven't had enough uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay oh, i get it open in the end you see it is brute force with me right so, so what were you what were you saying sam about this well this is called entropy meridian is that that's right entropy meridian i'll read out some of the facts and figures in a second but I just well on the nose obviously there's smoke but it's very green very grassy bright hmm. um Salty, there's a saltiness to it. But it's, I, I didn't find it. It's not like the heavy islas, or it's 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 kind of light. It's funny because I've, it's not the same bottle. But I, I gave a friend of mine going back to tequila we were talking about earlier on. Um, I gave him a bottle of um, Society Carlila, mm. a, a bottling from about six months ago, and. Um, he said it was the best bottle of whiskey he'd ever tasted, which mm. is great. Mm. Single cask, you know, cask strength, wow. you know, whatever it was, 60 odd percent, but just, and he actually said, this is almost like sipping a kind of one of the finest tequilas known to man as well. So yeah. to actually compare the, a whiskey yeah. to a tequila, I thought was quite interesting. There are, there are a lot of similarities, not just the, the liquid, but I think also the, the cultures, the, yeah. the Mexican culture, you know, the storytelling they've got, it's, um, and the passion they have for their, their produce as well. But um, this, this, is, uh, this is amazing, actually. It's a really... Right, okay. Well, I'll give some of the... Uh, so, as you say, Entropy Meridian. It's an Isla whiskey, a cow lila. Uh, peated is the flavor profile. It's a refill hogshead cask. It's 11 years old, uh, distilled uh, 1st of September 2008, and the alcohol content is 57%. Uh, for the numbers nerds out there, it's 53%. 0.318 and I should say the Elgin Marvels which we had earlier which I didn't give out the numbers for 35.251 just for people who are looking for it on the website or anything uh, a surprisingly elegant and subtle expression of this distillery wonderfully floral and heathery to begin vase or vase water lilies pollens dehydrated citrus peels gorse flowers and smoke of burning staves in a garden yeah, you're getting the, the um, I just put some water in there and it's oh, still really great mouthfeel and I, I just that's an incredible expression of a vanilla whiskey. It's yeah, and young, I'm going right? in. I mean, I'm going in. Mm, good luck. I mean, I'm getting the saltiness and the peatiness, but it is quite. It's, there's almost yeah, as you say, sort of grassiness to it. Mm. Almost a sort of. It's quite floral, almost mm, for yeah. a for a for a peaty whiskey. You know? Yeah, it doesn't feel like that sort of heavy kind of yeah. fireside feel. It's something quite summery about it. Were you drawn into because a lot on a lot of the guests on Malts and Music, but just a lot of my friends who are real whiskey heads, they were kind of like usual story. 
you know, terrible, you know, sort of bl blended stuff that they, you know, didn't like when they were kids, and then they discovered either a Glenfiddich or a Glenmorangie or something mm. like that, mm. and they was like, wow, this is great, and then they got into the Lagavulins, the Lafroigs, mm. like Carolilas, etc., and it was the smoke that completely converted them to, to yeah. whiskey. Wait, are you like that? Do you like your really heavily peated ones? Well, do you know, I was actually probably maybe the opposite in a way. I, I, I somehow got into the, the peated, and went, you know, down that slippery slope of, you know, ending up the Octomores and the, you know, the, the, the most heavily peated you can find. Mm. Um, and then I've kind of gone the other way. I do really enjoy a, a, a peated whiskey, but um, it's strange. I don't know. My part, I seem to be going the other way. I'm to leaning now towards like a sherry or a, yeah, yeah. something sweeter. But um, I, I do love them. I've spent... A time and a place, though, kind a, of thing. A time and a place, but I do love Isla, and I've been there a number of times and you know, visited a number of distilleries. And I think, well, segueing into my choice, that this is the... I was in Isla recently shooting Men in Kilts. Yes. With my co-star, Graham McTavish. Well, I was going to... That's where, where we're... Oh, that's what I was going to go to, but mm. you got there first, so right. yeah. 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 Yeah, well, I mean, you know, so we, we went to shoot in Isla and we uh, saw a number of distilleries there, uh, Lafroy being one of them, uh, Buna Harvin, um, yeah. and, and they're all doing great expressions there. And I really love that place. It's, it's so exciting. But we were shooting in summer, um, which m reminded me of this dram because there's something quite light and floral, mm -hmm. you said. And I remember cycling on our bicycles, you know, along the coast and the sunshine was blazing. Um, so then I started thinking about, well, music wise, uh, I couldn't think of um, of anything that was appropriate. I was looking for a coastal song or something Scottish, or and then I realised, of course, my my uh, groomer, my makeup artist on Outlander, but also came along with Menakilts, Wendy Kemp Forbes. Uh, she's she's a brilliant mu muso. She just loves music. She plays music all day, especially when I'm in the chair. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, it is, and her husband used to be. Uh, the bassist on Simple Minds, Derek Forbes. Oh, wow. Wow, one of the great bass players, definitely. Right, right. So sh she's got a great music education. So I was like, you know what? I'm really struggling with this one. So could you send me something? So she sent me, I said, could you uh, send me one song that reminds you of Men in Kilts that summer, you know, us on the shore, you know, drinking great drams. So she sent me a song. So let me have a look. What did she say? Uh, this is for you, Wendy. It's Pale Shelter... Tears for Fears. Oh, so right, okay, yeah. That is her Men in Kilts summer uh, in Scotland. There you go. That shows you that you can, you know, it's, it's to do, as much to do with memory and situation as it is to do with the actual flavours of it. I mean, I, I wouldn't necessarily put Tears for Fears together I, with I, a smoky I, I, dram. I was like, but, are you sure? Tears for Fears? But then fears? when I did my original fl flavour pairings with music, you know, I think as, as the more heavily peated, the heavier the music got and the more kind of like you know, almost like heavy rock and punk yeah. rock and things like that. Yeah. Um, just because it felt right. I think I suppose I'd gone through all the, you know, the different yeah. flavor profiles. Yeah. So when I was getting to the heavy stuff, the music got heavier. But Tears for Fears, why not? And well, if it reminds you of a it, time. It's uh, it, exactly. I mean, firstly, you know, it was summer. It was a really fun experience. This is a bright, light, I think, a version of, a, of an Isla whiskey. But, but also, I think of all these pairings, what I've done actually is possibly not paired to the flavor profile, but more a memory because each whiskey reminds me of something or brings, yeah. conjures up a memory. And I think that's what whiskey does. It's not just, it's got so many layers to it, hasn't it? So well, tell, tell us about the uh, Men in Kilts experience and, and the book, mm. of course, that you and Graham mm. did, uh, yeah. Clanlands. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah the, you know, that whole experience must have been obviously a new experience, but mm. something that you really loved doing. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if you'll allow me to say this, and it's like you're, you know, you're, you're kind of a boys with toys in a way. You know? Absolutely. You're kind of like, yeah. let's do this now, and then yeah. you, you do it. That's exactly it. Yeah, no, I, I created the show, uh, produced it. I, I, I just wanted to go out on a tour of Scotland and do things that I enjoy. And we were lucky we had the... We had Richard from the uh, from the, the society came and do a wee tasting with us. I think that was the first thing we ever did actually at nine a.m. a whiskey tasting. Nine a.m. whiskey which, tasting. Which is probably the right way to start the tour. But um, but yeah, I mean, we, we literally went all around Scotland, did a number of activities, and we've now just finished our second season in, in New Zealand, um, which I got to taste some great drams. Uh, there's some some really interesting uh, whiskey coming out of. Um, of New Zealand and of course you know a lot of the Scots that went down there took the skills with them so um, it's no surprise really and they have a, a very similar landscape but yeah it's, it's essentially 
two friends. I say friends with quotation marks. Yeah, but, you sort um, of you banter with yeah, each other, don't yeah. you? But uh, no, he really is a good friend. But uh, hence the reason I've mentioned him so many times. But um, it, it's a lot of fun. How did so. how did you work out how to do the book? I mean, how did that work? Just logistically, was it like you write a bit, I write a bit, and then bash, bosh it together? That's a really good question. We were it was during COVID, and we were in different locations around the world. He was in New Zealand, I was in Scotland, and we were writing, and we were writing online, and literally as you're writing, you could see his cursor moving, and he's writing, and so we're both writing. We just basically started arguing. You know, he'd well, there's a I'd bit written. of that in the program, right? Exactly. And, and, and in the audio book yes, as well. Yes, and the, the book is exactly that. It's, it's us. To, to, it's a conversation, let's say. But um, it's kind of fun. And, and now writing, we're doing a new one for the New Zealand trip. And uh, uh, it's fun. I love writing about Graham because he is, uh, he's a, quite a character. Yeah. Um, what, what else is there to do? The, the, the adventure show, you've done that as well. So, the, the, I mean, you know, traveling with your pals, drinking whiskey and, and, yeah. and you know, seeing the world. Yeah. Um, we've already talked about theater, television, mm. like one of the most successful TV programs in the world now, which has obviously shone this massive light on Scotland, mm. as well as, you know, it, you know, elevated your career and so on. More Hollywood films, is that kind of where you'd like to go? Where, where you know, See. what else have you got to do? And where yeah. do you want to go next? Yeah, no, that's, I appreciate you saying that, but I, no, I feel very lucky, you know, the show's, opened opportunities and doors for me and I, I, I do I have my sort of business side but it's just things I'm really passionate about and the whiskey the gin and a number of things I've actually got something really big for Scotland it's coming up uh, are you gonna give us a little exclusive um, on this or uh... it, it's very big and it's in the in this world um, but it's it's been a long time we've been working on it but I'm very excited about it so that'll be and then hopefully you know career wise and, and acting I don't know we'll see what happens but I, I would love to do do more and, and more, I, drink I me- more whiskey I meant whiskey. to say right at the beginning of this conversation but I'll say it now um, Esquire Man of the Year 2022 <laughs> yes, as well you. you and Rafa Nadal right yeah uh, great so, experience yeah cool. I was just in Madrid two days ago and um, got to meet Rafa and he's I mean, what a champion the uh, head of you know the top of his game he you have a game do you have a quick oh geez I did I did uh, I did say you challenged to him, him didn't and you he, he, he left pretty quickly but I'm sure it wasn't the challenge are you any good are you I, I, I think I could play yeah uh, I think I'll play but I'm probably not very good no no but um no it was great and actually interestingly I, I, I just love you know what I'm really into at the moment vermouth Okay, uh, yeah. Really fine and very Are you going into the Negroni world then? Well, I do love a Negroni, but no, I just, I tried a local vermouth there in Madrid and it was incredible, so good. And I just think it's a world that, um, that we don't, there, there's so many different varieties of it and, we, you know, we don't really explore them. And, I, and I just, I've just been really enjoying that journey of like discovering vermouths. We have some great Scottish vermouths as well. Mm-hmm. Do we? I didn't even know they existed. Yeah, one of the estates we work on. On the top of my head now, I can't remember, but they have their, they produce their own vermouth. They are on the east coast near Edinburgh. I can't remember the name of the night now. But, um, yeah, but there are uh, Scottish vermouth. Yeah. So we've had Tears for Fears on this strand. Right. We've had um, Martin Bennett, mm-hmm. Paolo Nettini, mm-hmm. and Toby Keith, and a bit of Frightened Rabbit as well. That's not, everyone said, I said, oh, I'm chatting to Sam Hugh, and I mean, how's, how's that going to go? And they went, Everyone that, that has had any dealings with you said, Terrible. he's a good egg. Oh, that's, that's pretty oh, that's... much what everyone said, he's a good egg. And you are a good egg. And thank oh, you very much, Slange. To, cheers, Slange. I've really enjoyed chatting to you. And oh, thanks for taking part that. in this. And good luck. So Whatever cool. happens next in 2023, You're I'm so, sure it will be exciting. That was so fun. Slange. Thank you to the Whiskey Society. Absolutely. Well. And uh, happy 40th anniversary, 2023. The Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, Glasgow, Edinburgh. There's a, a, a you know a room in London, and of course it's a global whiskey club as well. Right. So wherever you are in the world, there will be a Scotch Malt Whiskey Society branch near you. Yes. Cheers, Sam. Cheers. You can. Cheers. All right, cheers, man.